All right, YouTube. So this is Tony Lynn Gardner speaking to you guys. This is in my backyard garden in Lancaster, California, in Zone 8B. Um, in front of you right now is one of my first raised beds that I ever built. Uh, me and my brother built this, so it's kind of getting destroyed now. But anyway, basically, this garden is not doing as well as I hope. After four years of trying to grow in here, uh, as you can see, there's a bunch of weeds growing in here now. Uh, exactly not what I wanted, but I have a new uh, idea that I want to do in here. But before I start doing what I want to do, I want to water this in because uh, it's extremely dry right now. And then uh, I'm going to show you the process of me trying to fix the soil. Oh, by the way, this would be like a new experiment I'm doing because I have two raised beds. Uh, one to the left and one in front of you right now, which will be the right. Uh, this is going to be my dig raised bed and then the left side is going to be a no dig raised bed. But yeah, let me water this in and I'll be right back. Okay, so I watered this raised bed for about 60 seconds. And before we go any further on this raised bed, I want to show you how my soil looks like after four years of my trying my best to grow in here. Uh, clearly, I didn't know too much about gardening when I first started. And I've been learning more and more over the years. But I still think this soil is terrible. And I, what I noticed is that this uh, raised bed has a hard pan. So that's why I want to do experiment with one side I do a no dig and uh, this side I do a uh, right dig. So yeah, let's check the soil. You would think after four years it would be nice and soft and easy to get into. But as you can see, I'm struggling. And you can see even after a minute of watering, uh, it didn't penetrate enough and you see this part where it's nice and dark and wet and then this dry part which is something we're trying to avoid in the first place but it is what it is you're not going to be the best gardener in the world if you don't practice what you preach right anyway one of the ways i thought of uh amending the soil is by adding peat moss because peat moss is a great way of adding a organic matter and uh, uh, water holding capabilities so I think I'm gonna add some some uh, peat moss to this raised bed dig it in and all that jazz now how much peat moss to this soil uh, hard to say because I've never done it before. Wow, my peanuts is really hard. I don't know why. Well, yeah, I should mention that today is July 4th. So, even though you guys won't be seeing this on July 4th, happy 4th of July. If you're here in America. If you're not, then, uh, I don't know. But yeah, I'm going to speed this part up. Alright guys, so once I'm done planting cover crop, I'll bring in close how the soil looks like so far. But right now I'm planning on planting to I'm planning to plant a cover crop. Sorry for the difficulties. Um, in here I have sunflower seeds. Because uh, sunflowers are beautiful, so I want to grow sunflower. Um, I probably should try to grow two seeds in here. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to grow two. Just because this is a 4x4 four four raised bed anyway, so we should have an easier time coming up. Um, so that's the first seed I'm planning to grow. And uh, the rest of the cover crop that I have from a different experiment I was doing, which, come, which I'm going to make a different video on. But right now this is just a sorghum sudan grass seed and a little bit of legume so beans. That I have left from the cover crop I said from earlier. And uh, the rest is just going to be sorghum sudan grass. And I have plenty of it. So I'm going to spread this as evenly as possible. 
try not to fall over. Um, you probably noticed in here that there was a lot of Bermuda grass. And I know some of you are going to be wondering if I'm worried that if the sorghum is going to, or if the Bermuda is going to grow back. I am a little bit worried, but I'm not too worried. Even though sorghum, I mean, Bermuda grass is a, uh, it's really, it grow, grows by a trichome. So what that means is if it breaks apart, it'll, it'll, grow, it'll just grow more. So that is a, a little bit of a worry of mine, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. Otherwise, the things I want to grow, it's not going to grow at all. So I'm just trying to put the seeds a little bit more into the ground so there's good seed soil contact. Then I'm going to water this in. And then uh, a little bit of organic matter that I did pull out of here, I'm going to put it back in and use that as a mulch. Then I'm going to water it again. And then we'll start the second raised bed, which you guys haven't seen yet. All right, I'll be back with the hose. Okay, so I'm watering now. And uh, I want to give us a good drink. As you saw earlier, it was extremely, extremely dry. Even though I watered for 60 seconds, it was only on top. Granted, I didn't leave it for a long time, so it didn't seep down to the ground as much as uh, it probably could have. But either way, there was a hard pan anyway, so I'm pretty sure it wouldn't go in that deep in the first place. But yeah, I'll be right back after I'm done watering. Okay, so as you guys may know, uh, pea moss is extremely hydrophobic when you first open the bag. Um, so it would be a great idea to add mulch so we can uh, retain the water. Right now I'm just throwing it on so I can spray it out later or in a minute. But yeah, you want to make sure your pea moss is wet either before you add it to your soil or after you add it to your soil. But either way, mulch is a great idea for your soil. Especially because today is going to be up to 104. Your soil can be can go up to 140 degrees when it's 80 degrees outside. So for me, it might go up to 200. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll measure how uh, how hot my soil gets without a mulch or a cover crop. But since I'm already doing a cover crop and a mulching, uh, I can't do that now. Um, I'm just coming over here to get some mulch that I had that I got bought earlier in the year. Uh, so I can use in this raised bed because I don't want it all being Bermuda grass mulch. Even though I think it'll dry up pretty quickly anyway, I am afraid of it growing back. All right guys, so I realized I didn't show you how my soil looks like after I added the pea moss in here. So that's uh, my bad. But clearly you saw it before how it looked. It's extremely dry, sad. Yeah, it was just really bad in here. So this is what it looks like afterwards, even though it's not a close up. Um, I'm trying to get this video as done as, as quickly as possible because like I said, it's gonna be 100 degrees today. 
And uh, I don't want to be outside all day trying to record a video. But yes, this is how it looks like so far. I'm basically done with this raised bed. And next, I'm going to show you in the next raised bed how that looks like right now. And uh, what I'm planning to do with that raised bed. Alright guys, so this is going to be my no dig raised bed. As you can see, uh, I don't know if you guys remember or saw the video where I tried to plant potatoes in here. Basically, almost the front row grew, but nothing else did. But when I tried to harvest those potatoes, they were really tiny, so you can tell by the hard pan it didn't do that well. So, with this one, I am kind of worried that even though this would be a no dig raised bed, that the plants won't grow as big or as tall as I would hope or like. But either way, I watered this bed for 60 seconds also. Um, I digged a little bit. And basically, same thing that happened in the first bed happens in this raised bed. Uh, it barely penetrated into the ground. But yeah, let me start adding the peat moss just as a top layer. Um, I'm not going to dig it in or anything like that. All right, guys. So just like the raised bed, last raised bed, I'm going to plant two sunflower seeds. And then mainly add sorghum and ant grass as my cover crop. Uh, just because that's all I have left. And uh, as you can see, I did not mix any of the soil into this peat moss. Uh, just because, like I said, this is going to be a no-dig raised bed. Well, that was going to be a dig raised bed. So I'm going to just add them pretty much together. And then add the cover crop, water it in, put a mulch on top, water that in, and then we'll call this video day. All right, guys. So here's how this raised bed looks like. I after I uh, mulched it, or well, after I seeded, mulched, and then watered it, and yeah, that's it. All right, guys. So that's it for today's video. Uh, just a quick video on how I plan to go with these two raised beds in the near future. Again, on my left side or your right side, I guess uh, it's gonna be a dig raised bed. And my right side or to your left is going to be a no dig raised bed. So hopefully I can uh, make these be raised beds better than they were before. Like I said, there's a hard pen on both of these. So that's what makes it difficult to grow in these uh, raised beds. Um, if I could change what I did in today's video, I'd probably add some compost. But I didn't have too much compost, so I didn't want to use it on my raised bed. I'd rather save that for making compost teas, compost air tracks, stuff like that. Uh, and then uh, add that to my comp uh, re add that to my compost area or my warm compost, whatever. But yeah, that's a one huge difference I would make in the, these two raised beds. Uh, maybe dig a little bit deeper in this raised bed, but it's really hard, so it was really difficult. But I think that's it for today's video. So yeah, that's been Tony and Garner. And this is Zone 8B in Lancaster, California. And that's it for today's video. So thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy today's video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Um, yeah, especially if you want to keep up with me in my experiment gardens. Uh, I would love to see you in my next video. And yeah, that's it. Peace.